please sound assembly. Usually that means it's time for breakfast, but not today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Happy Veterans Day. And on behalf of the Northampton Board of Supervisors and the Veterans Advisory Commission, welcome to the Northampton Township Veterans Day commemoration, which includes the unveiling of 17 additional veterans memorial bricks behind me. Veterans Day is a celebration to honor America's veterans for their patriotism, love of country, and willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. For all the veterans in attendance today, please rise to be recognized. We're also honored to have in attendance today Brian Fitzpatrick, okay. uh, Wendy Thomas, our state representative, the assistant to Senator uh, Tom Tomlinson, uh, Nick Diazio, and Matt Weintraub, our district attorney. Color guard, please post the colors. Please be seated. Thank you to the color guard from the Marine Corps League. I've been asked at least no less than five times today to say that the Marine Corps' birthday is today. Wish them a happy birthday. <laughs> sing when the caissons come rolling along. <laughs> yeah. I would now like to introduce from St. Peace to sing our national anthem, Lisa Gardner. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting Gave proof through the night 
I had a sore throat. I was going to do that. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. I'd now like to introduce Chaplain Fulford to give the invocation. I'd like to ask all the veterans to come up. I see that there's a lot of them. Please come up. Father, we thank you for this time that we can celebrate our veterans. We thank you, Father, for watching over those who came home. We thank you for those who are still in the military. Pray that you would watch over them and take care of them and be with them. Father, we thank you for your love for each one of them. We thank you for the first responders also, the police, the fire, the EMTs. Thank you for watching over them in our township and throughout our country. In this we pray in thy name. Amen. Thank you, fellas. You can have a seat. Thank you, Chaplain. I would now like to introduce our keynote speaker, <clears throat> excuse me, for this afternoon, Zachary Wyatt. Zachary joined the Army in March of 2001 and finished his career in the summer of 2009. After completing basic training at Fort Benning, Georgia, he had orders to report to the 101st Airborne Division at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Once at Fort Campbell, he was assigned to the 3rd Brigade, 1st Battalion of the 187th Infantry Regiment, otherwise known as Rakistans. I looked that up. That means umbrella in Japanese. It does. Shortly after 9-11, Zach deployed to Pakistan and Afghanistan as part of the war on terrorism. He took part in several missions in Afghanistan to include one of the first large-scale battles of the war, Operation Anaconda. In 2003, the Rakistans participated in the invasion of Iraq, a journey that started in Kuwait, took them through Al Hala, and into Baghdad. He would spend the remainder of his deployment in Tel Afar, Iraq. Zach returned home and left the 101st to re-enlist with the Pennsylvania Army National Guard. He was assigned to a reconnaissance platoon with the 56th Striker Brigade, first the 111th Infantry Regiment. In 2005, they were sent to New Orleans to assist with the relief efforts after Hurricane Katrina. Zach would finish his military career in the Army in 2009 with the rank of Sergeant. Please welcome Zach. Veteran Advisory Commission, the Township Supervisors, the elected officials, uh, Kristen, Dave, my friends and family. As a small boy, honestly, as far back as I can remember, I had a dream that one day I would serve my country. I was raised by two patriotic parents, one of which, my father, who's standing back there, grumpy, is a veteran of the Vietnam War. My parents taught me to be proud of this country, be proud of our flag. It's probably better that it's in front of my face, Preston, thank you. And honor those who fought for our freedom. Every Memorial Day, I would accompany my father to the grave of a Richboro native and an Army infantryman, Harry Wilson as members of the VFW honored his ultimate sacrifice in Vietnam. As a child, I didn't quite understand this honorable ceremony, 
that was taking place and continues to take place to this day. But I felt a calling to serve and follow in the footsteps of heroes. See, growing up, my heroes weren't athletes, they weren't movie stars, they were more than that. Like major Richard Winners, whose bravery, wisdom, leadership, selflessness, and level-headedness were the key to victory in World War II. Without major winners, the outcome of the war would have been different, and perhaps our lives different. Countless stories of bravery and extraordinary feats come from every war, and I was, and still am, intrigued by the selflessness that these patriots exhibit. How does one man lay his life down for another? How does one man lay his life down for a total stranger? How does one sacrifice everything for a piece of land? How does one do this for a country that sometimes loses track of what is right and fails to truly appreciate or recognize at times just how crucial the actions of one or a few may have changed the course of history for the better? I would soon find out. My childhood dream would soon, soon come true as I headed to basic training at Fort Benning, Georgia on a red-eyed flight out of Philadelphia. As my journey was just beginning, I remember thinking how right it felt, how proud I was, how honored I was to be able to serve my country. This was right. I entered the military during peacetime as a young 21-year-old but would soon find myself halfway around the world in a land that time forgot. Quickly, this 21-year-old would find the real answers to his questions. After a brief return home after basic training in summer 2001, I would find myself saying goodbye to my mother at a Greyhound bus depot in King of Prussia. My sister was there too, but we really didn't like each other back then, so... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I remember telling my mother I would see her at Christmas, but the world changed overnight and we changed overnight. And Christmas was no longer going to happen. Afghanistan. Strangely enough, when I was in elementary school, I had an assignment. One of the questions on that assignment was what country would you like to visit one day? My answer, Afghanistan. If I could go back in time, maybe I would tell the young me to choose a different country. Another war and more sacrifices. Sacrifices for other men. Sacrifices for others by men who didn't even know the other existed. Sacrifices that save lives. Sacrifices that saved my life. Why? Why are these men putting themselves in harm's, in harm's way? This was more than for love of country. This was more than the flag. This was more than all the naive childhood dreams I once had. We will return from Afghanistan now knowing the answer to those questions. The real reason why men facing battle do what they do. We would soon find ourselves on another battlefield, Iraq. We would make our peace with God, lace up our boots, and head straight into the belly of the beast. Another war, more sacrifices, more acts of courage and selflessness. One evening in Iraq, Kurt Curtis emptied hundreds of rounds of ammunition into an enemy position as we were pinned down by enemy fire. He looked down at me from his position above and he told me he was running out of ammo. The world around us was crashing down yet again and I thought to myself, Curtis just prevented all of us from being evaporated from this earth he did so without hesitation. 
I looked up at him, and I'll never forget looking up at him. I think about it every day. I looked at him, up at him, and I remember feeling this overwhelming sense of relief. The world was blowing up around us, but we were in it together. Curtis, facing enemy fire, stood up with no cover and suppressed an overwhelming force. His actions led us to be able to evacuate the wounded and continue the mission to seek out and destroy the enemy. His actions that night would allow fathers to meet their children, sons to return to their mothers, and husbands to kiss their wives. Curtis would go on to become an exceptional leader in the Army. Curtis would make the ultimate sacrifice a few years later searching for Bo Birdaw, Birdaw in the mountains of Af Afghanistan. The bonds that are formed in war are like none other. We were all in it. We were all in it together. It didn't matter your race, your sexuality, your religion, or your social standing. What matters was that we were willing to fight, fight to the death for one another, because that was the key to surviving. It was no longer about country, it was no longer about the flag. It was no longer about the patriotic duty. It was no longer about those who came before us. It was literally about the guys to the left and the guys to the right and the guys coming to see. This is why men do what they do in a time of war. And this is why the bonds are unbreakable. The friend in my adversity, I shall always cherish most. I can better trust those who have helped to relieve the gloom of my dark hours than those who are so ready to enjoy with me the sunshine of my prosperity. Ulysses S. Grant. You know, when Kristen asked me, actually, I'll back up. When the Chief Ballin told me to speak today, and then Kristen asked me, thank you, Mrs. Clark. Kristen, Kristen asked to, uh, for me to speak today to all of you about what Veterans Day meant to me. I had a difficult time, I honestly did, thinking about what I was gonna say up here. So you can ask any combat veteran, any true combat veteran, and they'll tell you the same thing. To us, it's not about Veterans Day. Because every day, to us, I would like now like to thank Lisa Russo, a Navy veteran who also served in Desert Storm for all her behind the scenes work, who will lead our longtime township employees of the unveiling of the new bricks. Lisa, will you join me up here along with Kathy Walls and Chief Mike Clark? afternoon. David McLevick, Felix Kolowalski, Duke Gubner, Eric Calisto, Alex Segura, Charles Caney, Vincent Dion, Edward Cotton, Marvin Deitch, Michael Deitch, Neil Clark, John Leading, Joseph Zador, Michael Maven, Joseph Saracino, Richard Jumper, Zachary Wyatt, Michael Clark, and Harry Wall. <coughs> Round of applause, please. Before you leave, you might, might want to take a look at those bricks. It's really something. Veterans Day has emanated from Armistice Day that was created by President Wilson in 1919 to commemorate America's victory in World War I and to express gratitude to the veterans who served during the war. The original date and time of observance was specific. The 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month 
to mark the exact time when the hostilities of World War I ceased in 1918 and what was at that time hoped to be the war to end all wars. Over the years, various acts and proclamations were made by presidents, which modified and eventually codified the purpose and date of our current Veterans Day observance. Currently, there are approximately 18.2 million living veterans in the United States, which is about 7.5% of the population, and over 840,000 of them reside right here in Pennsylvania. At this time, I would like to recognize the members of the Veterans Advisory Committee, Chris Riley, who is our chairperson for the committee, Tom Yagel, Tim O'Donnell, Brown, Wendell Rich, Frank Dufter, Boss Capabianco, Dave Reese. That's me. <laughs> uh, now, Chaplain Fulford, please give the benediction. Before I do, I'd like to read something to you. See these two pictures up here on the podium? One is for the Marines, and the other is from the Purple Heart Museum. And there's a saying right above the two, three soldiers there. The soldier, above all other people, prays for peace, for he must suffer and bear the deepest wounds and scars of war. Let's pray. Father, again, we come to you and thank you for this day. We thank you for your love for each one. We thank you, Father, for watching over them. We pray that you'd go with them, help them enjoy their families, their friends, and those who are here to help them. Thank you. In thy name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Color guard, please retire the colors. gentlemen thank you for joining us here today and I'd also like to thank all those that assisted in the creation of the brick pavers as well as the ceremony thank you to our elected officials guests family members and most of all thanks to the veterans for their service to the country a special thanks to Tom Yagel for the sound system our public works folks who helped set this up Giorgio Martins back there and Brett Prezik I think I got that right uh, this, oh, and also thanks to the fire department over there. I didn't see all you guys over there. Thank you. Uh, this concludes our ceremony today. Kindly join us for refreshments inside the township building. Thanks again. It was an honor to serve.